Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. By integrating the comprehensive animal health product portfolio of Merck Animal Health with the innovative technologies of all flex livestock intelligence, we are shaping the future of animal health, resulting in more effective solutions and healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We're going to have a great show. I have a friend and colleague that's going to join us. His name is Dr. Brad Scar. We're going to talk about culling cows. We're going to talk about other things with cows because this is a person you're going to want to have a little bit of time with. We'll be right back. To spur performance and productivity in your herd, look to Bovalus Vision 7, powered by the proprietary spur adjuvant, allowing smoother administration and fewer reactions for effective low-stress clostridial protection. And low stress equals higher weaning weights, a proven 14 pound advantage. With a gain like that, you're spurring profits too. That's what you get with the number one clostridial vaccine for calves, proven protection that spurs all around forward progress. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk, and uh, Dr. Scar, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. This is an honor. Oh well, the Thank honor is asking. mine. Uh, this is Dr. Brad Scar. He is a professor here at Iowa State University in the Department of Animal Science, and uh, is a friend and a colleague. And we do not have a better teacher on our campus than Dr. Brad Scar. And nobody has the passion, and uh, just. So thankful for all you do. Well, thanks. We're going to talk about cull cows. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you know, you teach a lot of beef production and cow calf and, and extension and different levels of, of education here. But what are, you know, kind of give us a, an intro, intro to the cull cow discussion. Oh, sure. Well, the topic is important. And I don't think anybody listening to the show needs to be told that Coal cows represent a pretty significant amount of the income of, of a rancher farm. So how one approaches culling cows has a bigger impact sometimes than people realize. I think there's some people who tend to treat the topic as just kind of one of those necessary, unnecessary, difficult side activities to get back to the real business of raising cattle. But when it's 25, 30, 35 percent of your, your ranch's income, uh, it, it needs maybe a little more attention and probably no more important than this year. Uh, because of the difficult situations with drought and feed supplies and feed costs and all of that. So it's kind of complicated. It is complicated and, and so important. I, yeah. I, you know, it's that if you're, if you're looking at your total revenue, this is one of those you better pay attention to. And right. so, so what do you, what are some of the reasons or major reasons, mm -hmm. you know, aside from, like this year, an, an act of God with the drought, you right, know, right. what are some of the like year to year reasons for calling cows? Well, um, this is fall. Uh, most people calve in the spring, so it's preg check time. Yep. And uh, we just had a lab in our class here two weeks ago where all the students went through and did the same. And so our farm manager had the difficult decision of getting rid of some cows that were, were open, right? Yep. That's the number one reason cows leave the herd just failure to breed. Sometimes we can identify why, and unfortunately, most times we can't identify why they didn't breed. It might cause us to ask, you know, what other things do we need to worry about? Nutrition, our AI capability, or whatever it might be, bull fertility. But nonetheless, the cow needs to go because we can't afford to feed her in most cases. Uh, so failure to breed, number yeah. one, 35, 40% of the variation is, is that alone. The next one, it depends what survey you look at, right. and what ranch and what kind of circumstances. Probably the second biggest reason is people decide they want to move the generation forward. 
14, 15 okay. percent of the reasons why a cow leads the herd. Maybe it's not because uh, the cow is is failing to reproduce, but the producer has decided she needs to move on, and I want to put new genetics in the program. Then two or three percent across the board would be f the inability of the cow to function properly in the herd, and that could be a whole list of reasons. Uh, breakdown of uh, mammary suspensory ligaments, yeah. causing greater incidences of mastitis and injury, uh, poor body condition, bad mouth, cancer eye. Then we get into it just depends where you live and what the problems are. And then the one, the ever present temperament. And temperament for sure. <laughs> Absolutely true. And more and more important as it goes along, especially as the average age of a beef cow calf producer is getting closer to 60 every year. So that's right. Uh, we don't run as fast. Whether it's people or cows, <laughs> temperament matters. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. There you go. You can see why I enjoy working with Dr. Scar. And we're glad you watched the show. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. We see you working hard from the early mornings to the late nights and every hour in between. We see you. We see the pursuit, the desire, the effort, the hope, the goal of being a champion. And we see that you need a partner to keep your animals healthy and happy. With our countless products and quick and reliable shipping together, we can do just that. To the cowboys and cowgirls, to the dreamers, we see you. Success in the cattle business hinges on a lot of different people playing their part. From the vet to the cowboy and the nutritionist to the feed truck driver. You rely on them to get their job done right and so do your cattle. Your expectations for the vaccines you use should be no different. By Meat is Cattle vaccines were developed and are made and sold by men and women in the cattle business. No smoke and mirrors, just real world protection that you can rely on. Go to buymeatabiologicals.com to learn more. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Brad Scar. We're at Iowa State University where Dr. Scar serves as a professor here at, at the in the Department of Animal Science and teaches classes from a to Z. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's teaching our, our newbies. Yeah. We have the introductory course at Iowa State and three or 400 students a semester, all the way up to senior beef cattle management. We yeah. have an issues course where we talk about persuasive argument and Aristotelian rhetoric. So it's, everything in between. And it's all focused <laughs> on our and, production, on agriculture, on right. animal agriculture and, and moving it forward. And, and, um, it's, it's awesome. I get to sit in on class and every once in a while help with the class, um, but you won't find somebody more passionate about students, their learning, and uh, putting it forward. So if you do have somebody out there that's a new student, get a hold of us uh, if they want to come to Iowa State. That'd be great. Um, we would love it. Let's talk about cold cows again. Okay. And, and so now, you know, we've decided that the open, temperamental, <laughs> animal that that uh you know or we're moving our genetics forward right um you know when we when we see the dairy industry mm -hmm. and they call you know a dairy cow gets one or two like two or three lactations right and they're they're calling the bottom two-thirds and you know they're going to milk them but they're going to this beef on dairy cross but what are some of the reasons when we look at at uh the the culling, why is it so important? You kind of mentioned oh. on the economics, but within that economics, what's the the potential cost and what's the potential revenue? Well, the challenge is that getting a cow, in, you mentioned dairy, and I thought that was interesting because for beef cattle producers, it costs us so much to get a heifer in place for that first calf <clears throat> that it really takes two or three years to even break even with that initial investment. I've seen dollar values in Iowa that run $2,000 to $2,200 of total investment yep. just to get a heifer in place in a commercial herd. That's a lot of money. And so we need to keep her in the program as long as possible. That's what makes culling so difficult because if she fails earlier than that, she needs to go, but it's a substantial cost. And so uh, it's not an easy decision for producers to make. 
then after that, we need her to stay in the herd and produce for as long as possible. So, you know, there's a tendency to hold on to that cow a little too long. Maybe she didn't breed one time. For those that have a fall herd and they want to roll those cows over, maybe they can begin to justify holding on to a cold cow for a few more months of feed bill. But for those of us that calve once a year, that's a you know, feed costs now are easily in excess of six hundred dollars for an average producer. They can range from what three hundred to over a thousand just in the Midwest alone, and so uh, we really can't afford to keep her around. I'm convinced more and more outside of a lot of people that produce purebred bulls mm -hmm. that the fall cabin herds are are just a subset of the ones that failed in of uh, staying in the oh in the absolutely spring herd. absolutely true i mean if you talk to our beef farm manager at iowa state we have a fall herd it's primarily to produce cattle for research and teaching otherwise he'd rather not have it it's expensive it's hard to keep cows in condition the cull rate is always higher in the fall herd to begin with but it does give him the opportunity to hold on a few of those spring cows an extra few months Turn him into a commercial cow if we need to. And he has some purebred cows. He does. And the so spring herd is all to, purebred. He's so. trying to propagate right. some some genetics, and that, that that's a little bit different. But when I start thinking about, and, and we can get into this after the break, but when I start thinking about that, the, the, the spring, summer, fall, mm -hmm. you know, and the way the good Lord and Detroit designed a cow, it <laughs> kind of fits together. It does fit together. That's right. That's <laughs> so, right. True, too. <laughs> so... We're here with Dr. Brad Scar. We're going to take a break. When we come back, more on cows, beef herds, culling. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're sure glad you joined us. Dr. Nels here, folks. We're super excited about this book on hiring. Have you made a bad hire? Have you hired someone you wish you wouldn't have? Are you looking to hire? It's a great short read on helping you in the hiring process. You can find it on Amazon, Kindle, Audible or find it at drnells.com. Check it out there. We'd love to see you there. As a stocker operator, your job is to turn forage into profit. With the right implant, you can. Revlor G improves grazing performance for 150 days, the same length as the typical grazing period. And it's dosed for stocker's maturity levels, adding up to an extra 23 pounds. See why Revlor G is the number one choice in stocker implants at RevlorG.com. A withdrawal period has not been established in pre-ruminating calves. Do not use in calves to be processed for veal. I'm Dr. Les Anderson. I'm a beef extension specialist at the University of Kentucky. The Alert is on Farm Test has the opportunity to completely change the industry. A producer is enabled and empowered to be able to take the sample and run the test or tests at their leisure without scheduling anybody. And honestly, reproduction is the thing that we measure the least, and it's the thing that dictates profitability the most. The Alert is on Farm Test will help us to identify cows that get pregnant early. It'll improve our efficiency tenfold. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Brad Scar. We're at Iowa State University where we both teach uh, in the Department of Animal Science. Uh, we're talking about cows. We're talking about cull cows. You know, we tried to do the call them market cows we tried to call them yeah. you know everything it, it, the best story i've heard is that when we went from the, the you know the beef dairy cross we yeah. call that dairy beef now right it took a, exactly one minute for the dairy industry to realize you know cold dairy cows are dairy beef too they're all beef so it's just dairy beef right what is it 35 percent so, of the beef consumed in the united states comes from the dairy industry yeah so it's that's dairy right. beef right that's right and so i just instead of calling it cold cows or market cows or whatever it's just beef beef it's cows it's so for dinner these cows that don't breed that we're going to remove right. from the herd you know what are we going to do with them what do we do that's a hard one the easy thing that i think most people probably do is load it up and off to sale barn the local sale barn yep. and since the average herd size is rather small that's that's maybe their best and only option if you have a larger herd you can arrange some some load contracts with uh, market endpoints 
and yeah. deliver some beef that way and then treat them as a larger group. When the average herd size is less than 40, that option is, is less available when you've got three or four or five cows going at a time. That's tough. Um, so you've got a cow. She probably didn't breed. She's probably too thin because that's why she didn't breed. It could be other reasons. What to do? Um, another option that presents itself and is difficult to determine because of feed costs lately, though, is what if we what if we were able to hold on to her and increase her value? If she's a thin cow that just simply failed to breed, could we increase her value by putting her on a, a high concentrate diet over time and turn her into what might otherwise be a feedlot steer for a short period of time? get an extra little bit of condition on her and increase her quality grade and uh, bring a little bit of premium in the market that really has a demand for that kind of cold cow. Yep. Take her out of that that light lean cow category and move her up into what they'd call a breaker or a boner category and and uh, or even feed her a little bit longer with some corn or maybe barley depending where you are in the country and, and turn her into what they call a white fat cow, right? Yep. And there are markets for that. There are some challenges because as a cow gets heavier and she puts on more fat in that way, she becomes less feed efficient. There's a point where that's not profitable anymore. It looks good, but it's not bringing you that extra income that your mission requires. So there is an end point where that doesn't pay. And, and I'm sure that grain costs, right. what the bushel price of corn as it goes up, it makes the, it less attractive to put cows into that it's, program. It's hard to do. Now, you can feed them out on forage, but you put them on a grain diet that's going to work. I've seen costs of over a dollar a day now estimated to take a cow, let's say add another 100, 150 pounds on her in a month. But if you've got a 30 days at a dollar to dollar 30 a day cost, but you can go, there's about $11 difference right now per hundred weight on breaker versus boner versus lean cows. So if you can take her up a category in 30 days and spend 30 or $40 in feed to do it, and bring her 50 or $60 at the market, not a bad plan. You go higher than that, it probably won't work. Yeah, it goes back to red meat yield on those right. cows and, and what they're buying. And uh, yeah, it's it's really important. I remember buying some cull cows and uh, we were feeding them. Right. And two days after we bought them, uh, two of them died. Oh, and uh, ouch. one of them had hardware or something else. I remember calling my dad saying, dang it, that was all my profit. And he goes, there's a reason why someone cold the skin. Well, and that's that's the other side, right? You've got those cows that really just don't need to go any further. They need to be removed from the herd, but they're not going to go further in the food chain. Yeah, yeah there's something else them. wrong with them. That's right. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have a wrap up here with Dr. Brad Scar. We are a start to finish yard, bring them in at 500 pounds and finish them out to 14 to 1500 pounds. Max capacity is about 15,000. We begin with the end in mind, which that means it starts from day one coming off the truck. Heard all sorts of stuff about the, the generics coming out from you know a few different companies here and there, but we started working with Bimeda. What I like about working with Bimeda is our rep. You know, he's, he seems like he's just a, one of us. Kind of, he knows he's been in the cattle feeding industry for a long time. He understands where we're coming from, what goes on in the feed yard. So we started implementing Mackerson last July, and uh, we're using it as our, our first pole treatment. The, the data shows that the success rates on BRD, you know, they're equivalent to the other macro lights that we were we were using you know we just feel fortunate enough i guess to get our hands on it and it it works great for us for a you know first pole treatment it's what really jumped out to us working with by me to meeting with the rep mackerson's affordable we finally got a product that everybody can afford we try to do the little things right whether it's from low stress cattle handling animal welfare how we work with the cattle every single day you know, that's something we really focus on, but when you've got a product like a Mackerson, it's just another assurance protecting you, controlling your BRD from what stressors are thrown out there or what Mother Nature is going to bring to you. This industry, it, 
it takes everybody, uh, whether it's working with the nutritionist, it's cowboys working with the veterinarians, everybody plays a part and uh, we expect them to do their jobs but also we expect you know the the drugs or what we put into the cattle to do their job too and I think these Bimita products they're proven that they're doing the job for us. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson and Dr. Brad Scar at Iowa State University. We're here in Kildee Hall, um, and we're talking about cull cows and you know we talked about the good ones right we've right. talked about feeding the feeding up to white fat programs and increasing muscling and yield and just provi providing some really good wholesome product options to add value yeah adding value so the other side of this is there's some cows that probably just shouldn't be entering the food chain that's right we are probably all familiar with that uh, rare but occasional and badly overpromoted incident where uh, a problem cow, a lame cow, one with a broken leg or whatever the reason shows up in a public place and there happens to be a camera available or whatever the situation. And, and when that happens, uh, we feel bad. It's not what we recommend, is an, an, not an understatement. And, uh, and yet we all carry the, the weight of that incident. So yeah. it behooves us all to be very careful not to put in front of others those things which we would not want to see on TV. Yeah, I I sit I, there and go, you know, if you if you don't think that this animal is, should be represented, uh, should represent our industry on right. Ellen DeGeneres show, <laughs> don't send it. Because to, it will. But now there right. are some yeah. that are ugly that are very healthy. <laughs> that's right, that's right. We're not talking difference in body type. Yeah, we're talking. It's that broken leg that... Uh, yeah, fit, that, fit for transport. Fit for transport and mobile uh, and uh, not a downer or a ambulatory and not so riddled with exterior signs of various diseases that you would not be proud if you wouldn't want take to put it to it a on, public place, right? Yeah, put it public place or put it on the plate for your family. Right, because it doesn't represent us well, and it's certainly not representative of the image that we hold in high esteem in the beef industry to supply healthy, wholesome food for the rest of our neighbors. And, and I'm telling you, we're not telling, we're not saying something here that's going to disrupt the finances of your herd or disrupt the finances. Because I hear people right. say, "Well, I'm going to send her the sale if she gets ten dollars. That's ten dollars I didn't no. have." Right. Yeah. Don't. don't it, we don't do that. No, nope, because that's about all she'll bring anyway, and yep. then we all have to carry the mantle of that appearance. Yep. Appearance is everything more so nowadays than it was when I was a kid. It yep. may have been different and, then, but it's not that way now. And what happens is, you know, we may not have traceability, but I saw in the uh, NCBA uh, cull cow audit. Right. We can track seventy-five percent of the cull cows back to the ranch anyway, of origin, right? Without a traceability system, without a tag, right? And and what happens is sale barns get closed, calf ranches get closed. You know, there will right. come a point in time if we send these animals that you won't be able to market your cattle. That's right. And then where will we be? Dairies are finding. And that it out. doesn't take a lot of those incidences to make that a possibility. Yep, it's better. They said with euthanasia, it's better to be a, a week early than a day late. I've heard that. Yeah. And, and, and it makes uh, sense. Yep. Yeah. So any closing comments on, on, uh, cold cows? I want, I, you know, pardon the pun. I don't want to end on a downer. Um. <laughs> I'm going to remember that. That's actually good. No, you know, I, I think on the subject of cold cows, uh, aside from what we just talked about, the decision is complicated. It's complicated by feed prices and resources and, you know, on the other side, we've never seen cow coal prices this high in my lifetime that I can remember. So the best thing a person could do is, as they often say, pencil it out. And, you know, our university extension resources have tools uh, from A to Z to help us uh, lay down a budget, a partial budget, make the decision. Uh, they have good contacts on where to go with certain kinds of cattle. And uh, I think it's just important to reach out to those kinds of experts and help them employ those decision-making tools to decide what's best to do. Great.
Thank you so much for the information. Folks, uh, thanks for watching the show today. Remember, if you want to know more about what we do here at Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Uh, always work with your local veterinarian. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Brad Scar. Thank you. And we'll see you down the road. Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. By integrating the comprehensive animal health product portfolio of Merck Animal Health with the innovative technologies of all flex livestock intelligence, we are shaping the future of animal health, resulting in more effective solutions and healthier animals.